Hello, welcome to my class on Programming in Go. My name is Matt Holliday. In this class, I'm going to teach you Go from the beginning. So I don't assume you know anything about Go, but I do assume you know things like if statements and for loops and function calls. I'll start with the basics, like I said. We'll move on into talking about how Go programs are structured, how Go does object-oriented and concurrent programming. And then I want to get into some other topics. I want to talk about mechanical sympathy, benchmarking, profiling, uh, the Go tool chain, and best practices. And then we'll wrap up by actually building some backend stuff in Go using REST and GraphQL. I want to recommend the book, The Go Programming Language. I think it's a really good read. Uh, my class sort of follows the order of what's in the book, and I will take some examples and exercises from it. So we don't have a textbook, but this is a book I recommend with the class. Before I get into Go, I'd like to answer the question, why use Go? So there are really a couple of reasons to pick Go. One is it's a simple and readable language that makes software engineering easier, and the other is it makes software perform better in the cloud. Let me talk about the software engineering part first. What is software engineering? Well, it's really about programming in the large, programming with lots of time and lots of people. We need programs that are reliable and maintainable. We need to be able to change them over the years, we need to go back and read what we wrote in the past. We need to be able to hire new people and have them come on and understand our programs quickly. We don't want to be clever. Um, there's a phrase to out-clever yourself, and it really reminds me of this cartoon, the Roadrunner cartoon, right? Wily e. Coyote, super genius. He's constantly building traps to try to catch the Roadrunner, usually with dynamite, and constantly blowing himself up. And we don't want to go down that road. That's why we want to do things that are simple. Simplicity is the key to building good software. And to do that, it's not enough to write a simple program. We need to use a language that's simple and readable also, because we spend a lot of time reading the programs. A lot of languages like C++, they just keep growing. Every few years, a whole bunch more features get dumped in. And over time, it just becomes harder and harder to understand. Or you get different versions of code written in different versions of the language and so on. So Go was designed from the get-go to be easy to use. It was designed, like this quote says from the original Go FAQ, to be as easy to use as some dynamically typed interpreted languages, but to have the safety and speed of compiled languages. Simplicity has been one of the key design criteria from the beginning. And the focus of the last 10 or 11 years has been on keeping it simple and improving the runtime and the tools and so on, making garbage collection better, not dumping new features into the language. I really want to call out this quote by Eleanor McHugh that Go is a language that fits in your head. And the benefit of that is, instead of using a language subset or constantly turning to experts, Go is a language that's open to new people coming into the field. It's a language that's easy to learn and easy to use, and actually perfectly suitable as an introductory programming language for learning to code. So John Bodner wrote this blog post, Go is Boring, and it turned into a GopherCon 2020 presentation. The key point is that simplicity is a key language feature all by itself, right? We talk about does the language have this or that or the other, but it's really about what the language doesn't have that helps make it so powerful. Now, I want to flip to the other side and talk about the changes that's happened over the last 15 years. If I draw a line on this chart about 2005, we see that cores don't get faster. Instead, we get more cores per CPU. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the languages and techniques for building software that we have, they come from the other side of this line. So if we go and look at some of those, we see the popular languages today, and it doesn't matter, the order depends on what survey you look at. They're all about 20 years old or more. We can actually even say they're from the last century. And they date from a time when machines had one CPU with one core, they were getting faster every year, and concurrency and distributed programming were research topics, not practical necessities. Going forward, there's really only a couple ways to make software faster. We can either make it concurrent to take advantage of those cores, or we can make it suck less. And by that, really, I mean we can waste less. There's a saying that the cloud doesn't exist, it's just somebody else's computer. Well, yes, and my point would be you rent it by the hour, by the second, whatever. So if Go can run significantly faster, and against some languages, we're talking an order of magnitude faster, you're gonna save an enormous amount of rent. Uh, I don't wanna point the finger at any particular language. In this case, it's Ruby. But if you look at some of the interpreted languages, and when I was younger back in, say, the 80s, nobody would have built production software in an interpreted language. And then over time, we ended up with CPU cycles we thought we could waste. 
The reality is we can't waste them anymore. And so it's probably time to go back and think about, well, yes, we do want software that's simple. We, all, we also want software that doesn't waste. So Go is becoming the go-to language for cloud development, particularly infrastructure, but also apps. Performance is one aspect. There's another one, and that is that Go is simple to deploy. You can put a Go program by itself in a container. You don't need a JVM or an interpreter. You don't need libc or the rest of what typically shows up in an operating system. And what that means is the container is very small, and it's also going to be more secure because you've just left out an enormous source of vulnerabilities. I think this quote from Bitly's engineering blog really helps drive some of the key points here, right? It's a Go, it's a language that's easy to use, it's fast, it's safe, and it comes with tools that make software engineering easier. Now, I can't promise that Bitly is still doing Go or still as excited. You know, time moves on. But I think it was a really good blog article when it was written because I think it does capture the things that are still true today, that these things are still valuable when you contrast Go against some of the other popular languages from cloud development. I want to offer you this quote from the late Dennis Ritchie, inventor of the C language. A programming language that doesn't have everything can be easier to use than one that does. I think that's, again, a pretty valuable reason to pick Go. Thank you for listening to my argument, and now I'll get on with the class.